a very interesting question. Can children do mind training? You know, or do you have to be reach a certain age before you do mind training? I have actually worked with children very, very closely on mind training and had very good results with it. I was just sharing this story, the parable at the dinner at the lunch table, maybe yesterday or the day before. That I was working with a group of of parents that were Course in Miracles students, and they were kind of like a little community around me. And they had children, so I was interacting with all the children and everything up in up in Michigan. And this was probably about um, around the early to mid 1990s. And the parents, who were course students, every day wanted to have sessions like this. They couldn't get enough of it. They just were like wanting to just absorb everything. Every day, hours and hours of these kind of sessions. And it got to a point where the children started coming up to me and saying, our parents are really boring. <laughs> they really are. They're just, they really suck as parents. Uh, they're like these metaphysical zombies. Course in Miracles and Yap All Day and talk about what's an illusion and this and this and this. And, and then they go off and try to meditate. You know, they sit there and they just, they're no fun, they don't play anymore, they don't cook. I mean, it's just like, uh, fire the parents, divorce the parents. And so, the kids, the kids come up to me and they're saying, can we do something about this? Uh, this, is not, this is not good. They think they're being spiritual, but they're just just like zombies, you know, talking metaphysics all day. So, I said, well, the parents are, are doing the best that they can, but the thing about it is, is, is that in, to the parents, I told the children, they just see you as children. Uh, and in some cases, the worst case scenario, they see you as obstacles, burdens. Like, why, oh why did I have children? I'd probably be in the same state of mind as the Buddha right now, <laughs> if I didn't have you. <laughs> like, go out and play, and come in at 8 o'clock, I'll give you some food and put you, put you to bed. I've got meditating and discussions to do, I can't be actually flexing around with kids. And I say that's the worst case scenario. And a little lighter case, it was it'd be more like you're just you're just more of an annoyance uh, <laughs> to them because it's they only have so much time in the day they want to spend. They believe that the best way to spend the day is having these kind of discussions and meditating. And because they believe that, then you're kind of like second choice. You're kind of pushed away. So the kids were like, that doesn't sound good at all. I mean, that sounds Thank you for giving it to us straight, but uh, that's, that's not good. So what can we do? I said, well, what you can do is you, you can train your minds. If you want to work with me, I'll work with you as a group uh, on mind training. And I'll work with you so deeply and so sincerely that that's the only way that you'll get your parents back in the equation, is you have to impress them with your mind training. We have to show them that your, what your method is, is far superior to their method. And that will get their attention. And really, that's all that will get their attention. If, it's kind of like, a, you know, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. It's like, if you can show them the mind training, I guarantee you that will get the parents' attention. So, I worked with the kids. Got the kids over there. So the parents were off meditating and discussing. I got the kids outside and we went out and I said, now the first thing we're going to do is, I'm telling you that, that nobody, nobody can make you feel anyway. You, it's your mind. You can feel exactly the way you want to feel. Nobody can make you feel anyway. And so as a practical application of that, nobody can make you laugh. If you don't want to laugh, you can actually train your mind to not laugh. You know, to just be in a state of peace and nobody. People can tell you jokes, they can make funny faces at you, they can do all these things, but unless you really want to laugh, you don't have to laugh. You know, you, you're in control of that. It's totally a voluntary decision. So, I said, now I'm going to practice, like, uh, make faces and, you know, do all this. Do, just talk to each other, 
be like little comedians to each other. We'll pair you off. I want you to try to practice at staying in a state of mind where you don't laugh, where you're just peaceful. No matter what people look like and this and that. So they practice very, they had a lot of incentive. They really practice, practice, practice. So then when they advanced past that section where they, they could actually just stand there very stoically with no laughter at all, no smile at all, no matter what anybody would do to them, I said, now we're going to get physical. Because your parents will immediately try to come at you with the physical things. Nobody can make you feel tickled. Nobody can make you feel tickled. They can't do anything to you to tickle you unless you want to be tickled. You are completely 100% responsible for your mind and if you don't want to be tickled, you can't be tickled. They were like, what? <laughs> really? They said, yes. And we will practice this. So they went at it. They went at it. Under the arm, on the knees, under the knees, on the toes, bottom of the feet. They practiced. They practiced a lot of not being ticklish. They really, they took, this was like a matter of, you know, life and death for them, you know. The only other option is to divorce the parents and they weren't going to go for that. So, so they practiced and practiced and practiced and so finally I could tell by their practicing that they had <clears throat> achieved mastery of that. So then it was time to bring the parents in. I said, now we're going to do this in two phases. Let the parents think that they've got a shot. Do the thing with the laughter first. Say, go in and say to them as a group, go into them and say, Try to make me laugh. And, and then the parents will try to do all the faces and will try to do all the things that they think they know how they can push your buttons and everything. And then after you start light with them, then ask them to try to tickle you and make you laugh through tickles. And then it was kind of like they did. They went in, they did it. And then the parents were there, and then they said to the parents, try to tickle me. And the parents went, ah, and came charging on them. And these were like little Buddhas. <laughs> they were totally unaffected by the parents' surge of all this and this. In fact, they were like, <laughs> it was like the Matrix, like, come on, bring it on. Well, needless to say, the parents were extremely impressed. They were like, what have you been doing? You know, it was almost like suddenly the parents and the children were on equal ground. Because what was that equal ground? It was mind training. That's, that's the goal. And that's really the answer. Can children have mind training? Yes. In fact, I've worked with so many children, and a lot of them come in, they call them like indigo, crystal children, and so on and so forth. That they're, they're more ready uh, for this kind of mind training, we could say metaphorically, than a lot of adults that have, have just got a lot of conditioning and baggage, that have kind of adapted and adjusted to the world, and have a lot of undoing to do. So, I find it amazing. I mean, I, I've met, some of my students had, uh, had children that already were kind of transcending the laws of this world. Uh, one of them was was very transcendent in terms of, of like temperature. He would up in Traverse City when the when the bay would all the snow and ice would melt in the spring when the water when the ice was just melting he would go out and go swimming in this bay and adults would just see him out there in the water and would just actually get out of their cars and go up and and go out and actually touch the water. Because I was always thought it was like a hallucination or something, seeing a little boy swimming out there like a fish, you know, in this icy water. So, so this is good news in the sense that, that we can't pawn it off and say that children uh, are just innocent victims because they're so young. Because young and old are just part of the, the construct too. And it's really one mind, one ego, and as you free your mind of that ego, you literally free people, places, and circumstances beyond what you even are aware of. Like the Course says in the, 
in the beginning during those 50 miracle, miracle principles, you will touch those that you aren't even aware of. It's almost like the entire cosmos, as you start to awaken, starts to morph and starts to change, become more and more unified because your mind is the mind and as your mind is cleansing itself, is purifying itself, then the whole perception of the cosmos is, is completely morphed along with that change.